Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from uh, John McAdams, K3MAH. Now, he's just getting back into HF, and he's going to use a lower power 20-watt station. Uh, I recommend for first getting back into amateur radio or for your first time in amateur radio that you use a 100 watt station. Uh, 20 watts is not quite QRP, uh, but it is less power and you may find some added frustration. QRP is not a beginner's technique. It's something that it's nice that you get a little uh, experience under your belt with standard HF radio before you try it, but I'm thinking you're probably looking at the IC705 or something like that. In a lot of countries, the lower grade of license, there's usually just two. The lower grade of license in many countries is limited to 20 watts, which explains why we're seeing 20 watt uh, radios being built. It's being built for these people. In the U.S., they are trying to increase the number of R, uh, HF privileges available to technicians. That is going to be a many year process uh, for that to come about. Uh, not only do we have to un, uh, get past the FCC's inertia, but we need to get past uh, the uh, amateur radio community's inertia. I'm all for it. Um, because a lot of people get into uh, ham radio, they get a tech license, they get a little handheld and discover there's nobody to talk to and they're going, why is this important? When I got into ham radio, I was a novice, so I was on HF and there was a lot of activity. Now, granted, it was all CW, but, um, you know, I, I learned the code and all that sort of stuff back then. Uh, I have to admit that my Morse code speed level is probably down to novice level uh, right at this point, but it still works. Okay, now he'd like to try a non-resident N-fed antenna with a 9 to 1 unun. I'd go 49 to 1 if you can. Uh, an antenna tuner and low loss coax. Low loss coax. You mean like LMR 400? Um, the, well, if you want, uh, you can hold the coax with the radio hanging on the end of it if you want. I see many ununs that have different power ratings. My question is, will using an unun with a high power rating degrade either QRP transmission and or receiving performance since unun and ballon components, toroids, winding, etc., will be different if constructed and rated for lower or high power? The short answer to that question is no. Um, a to RF, remember that the RF that you are getting through receive is extremely QRP. You're talking um, 40, 50, 60, 70 dB down uh, from a milliwatt. Uh, it's, it's just almost infinitesimally small amounts of power coming on the receive side going through that unun or ballon or transformer or whatever you put up there, okay? That power is just incredibly tiny. That is the magic of radio. That we can put 100 watts in the air and it goes in every direction. And somebody somewhere halfway across the world can pick that up and amplify it in their radios and demodulate it and you can talk to them. That's the magic of radio. So if your uh, receive signal can go through a heavy duty unun like that, your transmit signal can go through it just fine and you won't have big losses. The losses for um, ununs and, and balance or so are usually around 0.1 or 0.2 dB. Uh, the fact that the windings are thicker means there's less resistance there and so you get fewer losses. You'll actually get slightly more losses if you use the QRP one, although the QRP ones are very much cheaper. Okay, so uh, has anyone tested the exact same antenna, but only varying different ununs and balance? I don't know of any specific documented tests, and I don't know that uh, it's an issue. 
that needs to be tested and publicized uh, because the actually the bigger the wiring and so on in these the um, less ohmic resistance you will have the less loss so go ahead and use them um, now I'm still going to throw my recommendation in there to take a look at the reference station uh, this YouTube channel has a reference station for HF now what a reference station is is something to refer to it's a list of all the components you'll need for a station down to and including a CW key and the power supply and the cable and the antenna and the radio and part of that reference station is the ICOM 7300 which is actually less money than the ICOM 705 okay and uh, you can uh, get a hundred watts out of that you'll find the 7, 7300 to be a delightful radio now the thing to do with the 705 or the Zygu 5105 or the Elecraft KX3 or things like that is where you do portable operations where size and weight become extremely important and uh, some of those radios uh, have built-in batteries even so you can uh, do some fantastic things with that and uh, while you will be a weak signal station uh, other people can hear you I would again recommend taking a very close look at the reference station before sinking a bunch of money into the 705 or something like that 705 is considerably more money than the 7300 and uh, it's almost a miniaturized 7300 which is a miniaturized radio to begin with um, I don't know I've never tested a 705 but I want the 100 watts and I would recommend 100 watts when you're first getting back in but to answer your question no you don't have to worry about using a higher powered ballon uh, or a thicker wire for an antenna or something like that uh, you probably for that many watts are not going to be worrying very much about heavy-duty coax I would say RG8X is your friend so take a look at that so there you have it I hope it helps and until we next meet 73